Well, good evening, everyone. It's nice to have you all here this evening. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, we are in the middle of a journey that, uh, quite honestly, we first started discussing many, many years ago. Uh, the desire to formulate a parks and riverfront master plan is something that we've been talking about for several years. And finally, we thought it's time we move forward with that. And so we're here tonight to discuss what is going to be your parks and riverfront master plan. We've done a lot of work on our own the nine years that I've been mayor, and I'm excited about all that. I'm really excited the fact that tonight that most of our city council people are here, so they're gonna hear the presentation, they're going to hear your questions and comments, and that's all very important. Um, when it came down to doing this, the engineering division, led by Melinda Sproul, just wave, Melinda, so everybody knows who Melinda Sproul is, uh, put together a nice uh, request for proposals that went out to various engineering firms. In the end, we chose three to meet with, and really, in all honesty, it was pretty obvious to us uh, after meeting with those three, even though there was a scoring system in place, that JPR was gonna be our choice, and so, uh, without further ado, I, I don't want to take any more time. I'll introduce Andrew, the lead guy from, uh, from JPR. Andrew, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for those kind words, uh, Mr. Mayor. As he mentioned, uh, my name is Andrew Cunningham uh, with JPR, here with Hometown Initiatives. He introduced me as the lead guy, but we are, we are truly a team. Somehow they chose me to come up here and talk first, uh, but we are truly a team. And what a great night this is. Thank you all so much for coming and taking your time to join us and talk about the Parks and Riverfront Master Plan. Uh, we have the distinct honor of partnering with the City of Defiance to help pull out these unique opportunities and formulate a vision that is both for the short term but also the long game as we look at what can really uh, set defiance apart and create a wonderful, continue to create a wonderful place uh, for residents to live in and create a regional destination for folks around the region to come see what defiance has to offer. In this short time, We've had a, just a great experience getting to know Defiance, get to know the community members, what makes Defiance unique, what challenges uh, there are that lie ahead, and what opportunities there are that we can really take a hold of. Tonight is one of those nights that we all really enjoy getting to do. It's a milestone as part of this master plan process. It's a time that we can get to know the community um, even better. It's kind of a culmination of laying the groundwork, of looking at the existing conditions, engaging with the community, getting input and feedback, and then summarizing those, summarizing what we've heard, and then launching into uh, the next phase of concepts and ideas and what could be. So we've heard some good words from Mr. Mayor McCann. We're also gonna take a look at the overview of the project. We're in phase one of a three-phase project. We're gonna summarize what we've heard so far. Uh, the community has really stepped up in terms of the community survey, stakeholder interviews, and said we wanna be a part of that. So we're gonna give that feedback tonight. And then we're gonna have some fun, getting some more input and feedback from all of you as we do some interactive activities, um, both using technology, and then we've got some stations set up at the end of the evening to have each one come up and give their collective feedback. So let's have a fun, productive evening. Thank you all. Um, so just a little bit of a background introduction here on our teams, as Mary McCann mentioned. Um, this is a team comprised of Jones Petrie Rufinski, which is a engineering architecture uh, multidisciplinary firm partnered with Hometown Initiatives, which has a very strong back, um, backbone in planning. Um, so kind of taking the best of both worlds, pulling them together for you, but that all starts with listening and taking your feedback. That's what phase one is about, um, to develop a plan that best suits your needs 
Um, so up here you see a lot of the uh, team members. So you met Andrew. Um, I'm Nathan Dyg here. We'll just go around real quick. Um, Josh Barkley is over here on the left, professional landscape architect. Amber Bassett, um, planning. Sydney King, professional landscape architect. And Amy is over hiding on the other side. Probably most of you saw her when you came in. Um, Amy's a planner as well. And then we have a lot of support staff who, who haven't been here today, but that have been helping us all the way through this project, taking different angles at different things, looking at the information we've see, received in the stakeholder meetings and the survey, and just really looking at that in different ways with different lenses, right? We all look at things in different lenses. Us landscape architects look at things different than planners and engineers. Um, so really taking a broad um, look at the information. So the, the vision, right? Everything wants to have a vision. What are we aiming towards? Um, so developing a community-supported parks and riverfront master plan that can successfully be implemented through capital projects, programmatic strategies, and operations. So what's that mean? That means the goal is to take these assets that you have, the fantastic parks, the riverfront, how many, how many cities can say they have three rivers right next to their downtown, um, you know, and taking that and how do we take those assets, build upon those, and create those into amenities that thrive and really support the community, both in quality of life, in bringing in tourism, uh, so in supporting what is existing here in the community now. Um, so Sydney, I'll walk you through here. You know, I mentioned the parks. You have a lot of parks and the riverfronts, which is fantastic. Um, so she'll walk you through that here um, as well. Oops, backwards. So this is a map of our project scope. Um, each of the blue dots represent a defiance park. Um, this is also part of that handout that was at the entrance. I know it'll be helpful as some of these parks have changed names over the year. Um, but we're really gonna take a deep dive at each of these properties, see how it's currently serving the community, um, what improvements might need to be made, as well as looking at connectivity. So we have the existing trails as well as the already proposed trails shown here but really trying to put an emphasis on how people get to parks, the connectivity between them, um, just to make a more cohesive plan here. And then this next map is a zoom in to the riverfront. Defiance really has such an asset with the river frontage at their downtown, and we really wanna capitalize on that. Um, and this graphic really shows some of the parks that have that river frontage that are great opportunities for us to get like engagement back to the water, so. Right. I think Andrew mentioned, um, we've really followed a specific planning process. The whole project has been divided into three phases, really to make that um, more manageable, but also to, to assure that um, every part of the project gets the focus and attention it deserves. So as Andrew, I think, said, we are currently in phase one of the project. We're in the beginning stages. There's really a couple components to phase one. The first is really community engagement, public outreach, um, reaching out to all of you, the Defiance community, and seeing um, how the per parks have worked for you, what could work better, really trying to engage and see um, what your opinions are. The second part of that is researching and taking an inventory of what already exists with regard to um, Defiance Parks, your equipment, some of your programs, riverfront property, that type of thing. Um, and then we will kind of intertwine those two, those two facets, public input, with what exists today and really come up with a, um, an opportunity analysis where we identify what the best opportunities are for Defiance Parks and moving forward and uh, for Defiance Riverfront. Phase two is we will, we will take those um, opportunities and really start doing some preliminary plan and design. Um, we will continue to refine those designs through input of a steering committee. Um, ultimately, phase two concludes with uh, a public open house similar to this, um, but also park board and city council approval before we go into uh, the third and final phase, which is the final design, final park 
master plan design. That is kind of the final refinement of the design of the projects. What is happening? Where is it happening? Um, but phase three really will take a deeper dive into um, how do we make this happen? How do we implement it? It'll look at funding and financing strategies. It will look at partnerships that are gonna be critical to making um, these projects happen. Um, I would say large riverfront projects are not something that usually a community just takes on by itself. It, it generally involves lots of different public-private partnerships, lots of different people involved to make it happen. So our community engagement, uh, we've gotten to do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, obviously, we've had a team work with Rob in uh, inventorying all the parks and riverfront. Uh, we've had some steering committee meetings. Uh, we met on a one day of the week with, I think, 13 different stakeholder groups. We had three rooms going at the same time um, with just different specific stakeholders in the community um, to learn what, what's important to them. Um, from their perspective. Uh, we also, my favorite part, was we got to go to the Family Fun Friday on first Friday, August 2nd, and we got to be the, ri the river that the bear goes through. So that was a lot of fun uh, to be here in August to do that. And we've also hosted an online survey, and I think we'll be sharing some results of that with you momentarily. As mentioned before, um, one of the main pieces for this phase one is getting out on site, actually learning all the various parks that was noted earlier. There was almost 20 of these parks uh, around the community. Um, and we just didn't do this by ourselves, right? We had the steering committee on one of our first meetings go out with us and explore a lot of the parks that were on the riverfront. And we got to hear a lot of uh, their experiences the things that they liked, the things that they disliked, things that they thought that could be improved on, and things that they noted that worked really well throughout the entire year, not just in that exact moment. And then, uh, you know, a couple more times, the team went out, visited the sites, um, and a big component of our inventory was, you know, what the Parks Department was able to educate, uh, provide to us in terms of the amenities that were there so we could go in with a magnifying glass in some cases and analyze the equipment and the programming that was there. Um, being summer, there was a lot of activity going on at the parks. So we were able to watch people utilize the parks. We were able to get spooked by deer walking in Riverside Park along trails along the river. If you haven't been out there, by the way, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then also looking at it, not just on the ground level, but while we're out there, throwing a drone up and getting an eye from the sky. And so just, again, visiting these sites, understanding from the community's input so far, but also the steering committee and uh, educating ourselves and being educated on your sites, very important to starting this process. Part of the community engagement um, was uh, beyond the survey, uh, interviewing stakeholders. Um, these folks, uh, professionals in their field, um, very specific careers within the community that have unique perspectives on the park. For instance, I uh, was uh, able to meet with uh, folks in the health industry dealing with uh, the elderly and, ch and children in the community, both with physical, cognitive, special needs, and also as able-bodied uh, seniors and children. And just getting that wide range of perspectives in that specific group on how the parks are successful. That's just one group we met with. We met with a variety of other groups, um, including local leaders, uh, park enthusiasts, and a variety of others. Again, you can kind of see, these are just a couple of the main points that we were able to take away from those meetings. But they're important because they help kind of frame a picture more of what the community envisions in these parts, what's working, what isn't working, what's successful throughout the year, and what people have seen in other areas of their profession that might work in this community or worth exploring. And again, it's all important for laying that groundwork to continuing the conversation.
So as Amy alluded to earlier, we were um, very excited to attend the Family Fun Friday event in August. And as she mentioned, it was the um, going on a bear hunt theme and we got to be the river. And before we all got soaked at the end of the day, if you were there, you know it was a beautiful morning that turned very quickly. We got to encourage the kiddos to get a little bit wet in our fun little splash pad. And that was really great and interactive. But while we were there, we also um, had interactive boards available, not just for kids. We wanted their input to what are their favorite things to do at the park? What do they wish they could do at the parks? We also had boards um, more focused for the adults and what do you want to do at the riverfront or what park amenities do you want to see? So that started to garner some of that community feedback and we were able to um, promote the community survey and then also promote tonight's event. So speaking of that survey, we wanted to do a quick snapshot of the results we've received. Um, overall, we had 543 responses, which means we have a statistically valid survey. And if you're a data nerd like I am, this is a great thing. We don't have to do it again. Um, the first question, one of the first questions we asked was, how do you travel to the parks? And this is a check all that apply. So the numbers are not going to add up to 100. Just so you're aware, um, obviously the main choice was drive at 91.3%, walk coming in at 33%, and then biking at 13%. We had a few other comments about um, skateboards or motorcycles, um, and then kayaks and boats was the other option. And then 1.3% said they do not visit the park, which was sad to hear because you guys have a phenomenal park system. The next question we asked is, when do you come to the parks? And not shockingly, summer was the favorited season, uh, followed by spring and fall, which were pretty much uh, in ties with each other. And then, of course, the dreaded winter months that no one wants to get out. This is not uncommon to hear, but we also heard about this in the stakeholder steering committees and how people want to be out or have activities to do. So that's something that we are also paying attention to. Next question is, if you don't visit the parks, why? 65% responded that that question is not applicable, which is great. That means that people are visiting the parks, they are being um, interactive with them. The people that don't say lack of time is their main reason that they don't attend, which is understanding in today's world. We also want to know that um, some have mentioned there's a lack of connectivity between where they currently are, where their house is, where their work is, and the distance between their park. Other people have commented that they visit other parks and recreation facilities, whether that's inside the Defiance community or outside. Um, that's one reason that deters them from coming to Defiance parks. There were a myriad of others. Those comments were a little off there weren't any key themes in those that stuck out to me. Um, random things that people, that, that life happens to, right? And then the next question, kind of expanding on the last question, is there a physical barrier or reason that prevents you from coming to the parks? Lack of available parking was noted a little bit more as well as the parks are too far away from their home. But the highlight here is 79.8% of this responded to there are no physical barriers. So obviously not everyone is as fortunate as others and that's something that we need to be cognizant of. But overall, your parks seem to be accessible to the majority of the population. One of the very interesting uh, themes that I saw in reviewing these is one question we asked, if there is better connectivity and safer pedestrian routes to get to the parks, would you attend or would you um, be a user more frequently? And a whopping 61.8% said yes. So this is highlighting to us that there are connectivity opportunities here that we need to look at a little bit deeper. So as Amber talked about, we want to get people to the parks, right? We, we want to kind of try to take away those obstacles, but then whenever they get to the parks, what are they going to do? 
what do they do now? Um, so looking at the question there about what, what specific activities does your family do, right? Kind of one of the ones that, at least in our profession, we typically see is that walking, the nature walking, the wildlife viewing. You go to the boardwalk at Reservoir Park, you're gonna see you know, exciting things and opportunities there. Um, relaxation, playground equipment, you know, especially for families. I have four kids, we hit the playgrounds. It's, Dad, can we go to the playground today? Dad, not today, how about tomorrow? How about the next day? Um, so you know, it's, a, it's a common thing. Um, and then programs and events and swimming. Uh, you know, and kind of continuing down that list, a couple of the themes as we're looking at some of those other, uh, you know, boating, kayaking wasn't, wasn't an option, but a lot of people mentioned that as they're coming through or adjacent to the parks. Photography as well, um, you know, within the parks. Uh, pickleball and, and even homeschooling, programming or activities, right, gathering, gathering together. Um, on the left side, looking at what, what are the most important park programs, right? So health and wellness, you're rising to the top. Um, so that was at 58% of the respondees noted health and wellness. 53% uh, outdoor adventure and programs. Um, and then adult, social, or adult and senior social activities at 52%. So those were all, the top three were all above 50% of respondees noted those. Um, a couple close ones that didn't quite make the list, but educational workshops and then sports leagues, right? Um, especially in some of the parks that really have a focus on, on those sports leagues. So next question was really focusing on the rivers, right? How, how do people use the rivers or, or do they use them now? Um, so 30% said yes. 25% said no, but they would like to. And then call it 50% um, said they do not use it. Um, diving into that a little bit deeper, which rivers are used, right? So really the mommy and the uh, glaze were the big priorities of what people tend to use. The Tiffin River also coming in there as well. Um, and then the question here on the bottom left is, if not, why not? Um, you know, Variety of answers, a lot of those just not having access to what they need to get onto the rivers, whether that's a boat, whether that's a kayak. Um, and then a typical, especially in Indiana, um, is the poor water quality or you know, the brown color of it or the smell of it or whatever the case may be um, coming up uh, throughout here as well. Um, and then some just as simple as I can't swim or I prefer dry land. You know, so there's a lot of a lot of different options and things that um, you know, really deter people from the rivers, but also a lot of things that really are drawing people um, you know, to the rivers and to that amenity. Another one of the questions we had asked folks, um, to ensure the master plan promotes an equitable parks and riverfront system, what communities do you think should receive particular focus? Um, and this came up a couple of times, I would say, in our stakeholder engagement and uh, just walking around the community as well, and it's evident there is great potential in the riverfront um, in downtown. Many communities would be delighted to have a river, let alone three, so close to downtown. And it is uh, apparent even in the survey that this um, being downtown with some of the residential properties and neighborhoods along the river um, gets a major focus in the planning efforts. And obviously there are existing parks along uh, the rivers here. Um, but again, those could be revisited and improved upon or uh, maintained in their current successes. Um, as we, you know, looked around um, in terms of what other communities uh, could benefit, one of, the, one of the things that had come up, and you'll see this later on, is a lot of folks recognize the benefit of just improving the existing parks rather than adding a new park. You know, a lot of folks saw what had happened uh, or what had been done, rather, to Bronson and the major success that uh, culminated from that in a splash pad, playground equipment, um, additional individual play amenities. And so just focusing on uh, parks that may have been uh, worn down over the years that need that extra 
love and attention um, is, uh, is also important to this question. Um, and so the next question, when, when you imagine what the Defiance Park systems could look like in 25 years, what are the most important community benefits you hope become a part of that vision? And again, as Nathan alluded to earlier, walking and health and wellness uh, radiated throughout our community engagement sessions and talking with the steering committee. There's a lot of benefit in just being able to connect people to these parks. Um, and you'll see this later on, but a lot of folks um, noted, you know, like an amenity like uh, the Buckeye Trail, oftentimes taking their safety into their own hands. There, there, there are sidewalks in town for sure, um, but uh, safer connectivity um, has also been noted throughout this process. Um, and so as you can look down through here through the list, it gets kind of uh, uh, heavy in the 40 percents here, but in protecting the environmental health, again, radiated throughout our community engagement. Again, you have the three rivers, you have woodland and uh, strong vegetative stands along uh, those rivers and within the parks and maintaining those is just as important. So the next question, um, again, what should the city focus on? Um, we had noted this earlier, um, improving what's there. We had mentioned Bronson. You know, the, not that we don't shut the door on the potential for new park or expanded park space, but improving the parks that are there today, um, you know, through a variety of means, whether it be additional play equipment, updated play equipment, additional sporting amenities, that uh, took the top spot and was heard quite often in our stakeholder engagement. Nathan alluded to the trails. We had mentioned trails earlier, paved trails, accessible trails, right? Um, having that ability to go, uh, you know, like Riverside comes to mind. Um, having that walkway, uh, we had noted in the uh, community engagement process and also inventory process, having that walkway connect to all the amenities in Riverside would be helpful to further activating Riverside. Um, restroom facilities, we heard a lot about restroom facilities, you know, doing the inspections to make sure that they're accommodating to families and are accessible. Um, canoe and kayak launches, again, bringing people back to the river. Um, we had heard that there's just simply not a lot of convenient access points to engaging with the river. And then obviously, uh, as we had mentioned before, connection between the parks. Um, there are you know, quite a few walkways in town, um, but we had heard a lot about having that uh, designated uh, pathway trail that connects or creates a loop around town that may connect those parks rather than walking in a straight line and adding a de in a, at end at a destination, being able to kind of create that loop effect. And then uh, the next question you see here on your right, identify the top five activities you and your family would be most likely to participate in. Again, we had mentioned this, outdoor recreation and nature. There's a, you know, evident that the community feels the same, the rivers, the green space, the ecological benefits that come from that, very important, and also very important to bringing activity and bolstering activity um, along the river. Bikes and trails, um, you know, I mentioned river, uh, Riverside Park earlier with the trails along the riverfront there, you know, um, it's evident that folks, few of them, understand that there's bikes out there, but how do we get people more involved in biking? You know, is it the inclusion of a BMX track, which for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar with that, think of a skate park except for bikes. Ice skating and uh, sledding rounded out the top five there. Um, it's interesting to, you know, it, no brainer, parks are used during the summer. How can we get folks out during the wintertime months? You know, Triangle Park has a beautiful Christmas event from what I gather. I haven't been there personally, but I've heard great things uh, from the community about that event. Pontiac Park with Christmas light display, again, a beautiful thing. But how, uh, how can we as uh, planners working with the city, you know, envision additional amenities? You know, there's the sledding mounds out by Reservoir Park. Um, you know, the potential is always there for ice skating, but where would that go? Who gets... How does that use? Can it be used during the summer for rollerblading? So those discussions are happening. And then camping and roller skating, we had already mentioned, you know, and you can see it towards the bottom there, um, you know, in terms of uh, additional amenities, ultimate Frisbee is pretty much well handled throughout the community. 
um, you know, at Reservoir Park especially, but those type of events can always be duplicated elsewhere. We also had some open-ended questions as a part of this survey. Um, and this slide here shows kind of your thoughts on the future of the parks, what's working now, what you would like to see, um, programming that's missing. And we heard a lot about an inclusive playground, not just for all abilities, but also all ages. Um, it's been mentioned that there might not be a lot of play for toddlers, and there's also a gap for teenagers as far as outdoor activities for them. Um, and these quotes really just kind of hit that home. We also have heard that Reservoir Park is used a lot for the trail system and that some more programming like that might be appreciated. Um, but it really just gives us a great idea of what's missing in Defiance, what we need to put into this plan, um, and what you guys really want. And then this next slide is the same thing, just focused on the riverfront. Um, and it sounds like there is a great drive to bring development down on the rivers, provide that outdoor eating area, um, more kayak launches, improving the boat launches, um, just really bringing that engagement to the rivers back, um, as well as maybe nightlife, um, some bars along the river perhaps, and trails, um, just trying to get a new scenery in Defiance. Another open-ended question that we asked, kind of open-ended, was um, what are the first three words that come to mind when you think of Defiance parks or rivers? And so these are the results. Um, this is a kind of a different format of a word cloud, if you've ever heard of a word cloud. So the words in the biggest circles are the ones that are um, noted most frequently. So fun, clean, nice, family, beautiful rivers, those are the words that were used over and over and over again in people's responses, which is um, pretty awesome, pretty cool. You guys got a lot going for you. Um, but it shouldn't be, uh, there are potential. Dirty was mentioned, obviously, more than once. So um, just gives you an idea of what the community thinks when they think about the parks and rivers. And similar to what Sydney went through, another open-ended question here. We, um, we really asked people to jog their memory. What was their favorite, favorite or fondest memory um, in a Defiance Park? Um, and obviously all over the board here, but a lot of them involve family. Um, a lot of them involve the rivers, uh, fireworks at the river, ski shows that happened in the 90s on the river, one of the best childhood memories. So. Um, and these are the things that really, I think, spark the community's passion to um, make, make a great asset even better than what you already have. So. Okay, well thank you all for walking us through the results of the community engagement, uh, feedback and survey, it's a ton of information. Thanks for listening to it. We have the wonderful task of, of really sifting through it, developing a, a matrix and studying it uh, to take all of those words and statistics and making them become a vision and pulling those into ideas, connections and concepts. And we're kind of chomping at the bit, right? That's the, kind of the next phase is to jump into those ideas and uh, concept creation. So we're gonna switch gears just a little bit. I get the fun, fun task of leading us through uh, an activity. We're gonna put technology uh, in motion here. Um, technology and iPhones get a bad rap, but we're gonna put them, put them to good use tonight. Uh, so if everyone can grab their, their cell phones, whether it's an iPhone or Android, and scan the QR code, and when we say scan the QR code, what you can do is open up your phone app, pointing at that QR code. And it will bring up a link. Click that link. 
and you should see a survey with a few questions there. The questions are very straightforward, just uh, four possible answers from very interested to no opinion. We'll take our time, there's no rush. Go ahead and scan that QR code, One pull up I that <coughs> survey. If you need help, just raise your hand. We'll come around and help anyone uh, grab that, no problem. One thing we forgot to mention earlier, but we likely have people joining us via Facebook Live as well. Um, so if anybody is joining us on Facebook Live, in the comments, you can find the link that will take you to the QR code as well. All right, we'll give a, a few more seconds here as people pull that up on their phone. And this is meant to be a really fun exercise as we kind of launch into the next phase, these concepts, and we start to, to brainstorm uh, what could be within both the parks and the riverfront system. It's not the end all be all, by all means. There are many more things we could cover, uh, but looking at the feedback we got, we pulled out a few key themes, a few key ideas to put up here tonight as, as a bit of a primer uh, to have some fun and kind of get that blood flowing as a first activity to look at um, some ideas and concepts before we jump in uh, to the other areas. Raise your hand if you're not able to get it. No problem. We'll come over and help. We'll give it about 15 more seconds. and then we'll start to jump into it. If you get ahead of me, no problem, but I'll try to give some insight as we go. And if you can't get it, no problem. We can always do it after the presentation as well. No pressure. All right, so if everybody's with me, we'll start to go through these one by one. So, the first concept, could you use outdoor recreation equipment? Of course, there are so many passive ways to go out and <clears throat> get fitness in, whether that's uh, a trail or bike riding, but there's also active ways. Uh, we can actually put exercise equipment out in the park space uh, to go and utilize. That's accessible for all demographics, all ability types. If you put exercise equipment with a great view of the river, I think I'd be motivated to come out there and use it. We talked a lot about activating the parks during the winter months. We live in the Midwest, which means for quite a few months it's very cold. There's ice and there's snow. Well, how can we celebrate that? What about an ice skating ribbon to come out in the summertime? It can be a walking path. It can even be a splash pad. But in the winter months, you can turn that into a beautiful ice skating ribbon, uh, complete with lights, music, concessions, and really kind of a magical environment. How about visiting an outdoor event venue? Uh, we got a lot of good feedback from the community that performances and events are well received. Uh, however, you have to bring in a stage. It's a little bit inefficient. Can we create that space, uh, that permanent outdoor performance space that brings the community together? There's something about that outdoor event that heightens all five senses and creates that memorable experience. Go to a skate park. Certainly some of the prominent feedback we heard was if there's a, a demographic that could be missed in the current park system, it's teenagers, young adults. One idea is a skate park. If it's done well, if it's high quality, highly visible, it can be a great asset for the community, especially uh, those teenagers and young adults to get out, have some fun, and uh, get physically fit. That did come up during community engagement, and it, it sounded like it could be used more if the word got out that it's there, and it could be improved upon. So whether or not it's building a new one or improving that one and getting the word out, um, to be determined. I don't think it's currently active at all, actually. 
Uh, I don't think uh, it's up to code, from what I understand. Good so feedback. It's thank not, you. It's not being. It's not allowed to be used. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So certainly an opportunity to improve what's there. So um, I'm at the tennis parks, the, the, the tennis courts a lot, it's a Palm Street Park, and we don't have lights, but the skate park has lights, so it can't be used, but it has lights. So I just would like to throw up to like the tennis courts. It'd be great if we had lights because we actually use them. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Good feedback. Could you learn about local culture and history through the park system? Uh, there is such a rich history uh, with Fort Defiance, General Anthony Wayne, uh, the Tuttle Museum, the local historians do a wonderful job of helping educate the community. Uh, can the park system come alongside and help promote that, whether it's local residents, students, or as a destination uh, from others outside the community to come learn about the rich history here the Native American culture, one idea we heard was that potentially Buckman Park could be a place uh, to highlight that Native American culture, history, and that story. Can I throw something else out with that one? Sure. So um, I had traveled to, and I'm probably going to say it wrong. Um, okay, it's where, wherever the Mothman is. <laughs> Portsmouth. Yeah, so we're. But they have a wall there by the river that it's it's an amazing mural that stretches this whole length of the wall. What and was the location? Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Okay. West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah. I think it's West Virginia. Okay. It, and it's it's amazing. <coughs> and I was like, if this was a defiance, I, I just thought it was really cool. But the wall was there because of their history and Indians and all of that, but also for the river, mm -hmm. I think to help keep the river away from the town. But it was, I mean, a wall like that, but imagine, I don't know how long that mural is, but it's really long. It's really so it kind of doubled as a, as a flood wall yes. and an interactive art piece and, and yes. history, educational piece. Wow, that's really cool. Excellent, thank you. Interactive art, engaging uh, with the local and even regional art community to potentially look at areas where we could do both permanent art installations or even a rotating seasonal art, um, sort of interactive to keep the community engaged, whether it's on the riverfront or within the park system. Grab dinner and a food truck. Uh, some feedback we got was that there is a strong food truck scene. And we've been a part of and seen some very successful, what we might call a food truck plaza uh, that gives vendors the opportunity to come uh, set up at a, a particular location at a particular time, and the community can come out, uh, take a stroll along the river, get some exercise, and then enjoy a treat or a dinner at that food truck plaza. Uh, relax in an outdoor seating plaza. You know, this can be a space for large or small groups spontaneously to get together uh, to relax. It could be a strong connection between the riverfront and downtown, a place for businesses to kind of spill out to, uh, or restaurants and dining areas to kind of utilize as well. Are you looking for some excitement? Outdoor adventure course. Uh, so kind of going along with that skate park theme, but focusing on potentially that younger uh, demographic and young adults. Uh, but it's also for all of us, right? Organizations and businesses can use an adventure park uh, to, to create fun excursions and, and team building exercises. And then kind of flipping over to specifically focus on the riverfront. Uh, as we said before, we are focused, you know, on the long game. Uh, certainly hearing community feedback on why they don't use the riverfront now. Some of it's just perception that they feel like it's dirty and polluted. So taking those initial first steps to clean up the river and then getting that perception out there that it is clean. It's ready to be used and engaged with. Uh, but one idea might be to rent kayaks for the day. Dine at a riverfront restaurant. 
Of course, being cognizant of floodway, floodplain challenges, those are always present, present when you deal with riverfront development. But are there opportunities uh, to complement the downtown with riverfront dining and create both a local and regional awesome destination? Take a river cruise. If the Steve Defiance uh, partnered with a local organization uh, to provide uh, educational boating opportunities along the riverfront, would you engage in that? We've talked a lot about uh, connectivity here tonight, how important it is within the community of Defiance, connecting the park system, but what an awesome opportunity to both enhance the existing trail system and then add to it to create that multi-use, whether it's walking or biking, but providing uh, that trail system along the riverfront. We've also talked a lot about active activities and things you can do. What about the passive, passive activities that's taking advantage of those strategic locations that you can go just sit and relax maybe learn about and view wildlife and enjoy the beautiful surrounding environment. This is one example of the way the community can set up specific activities uh, for groups or individuals to engage the riverfront. But how about participating in a river race? Maybe you can get your coworkers or friends form a team and participate in a river race. And finally, an outside the box idea, how about an urban beach here in Defiance? I say if there's some food trucks nearby, you probably find me and my family there. Well, I think there are a few more questions on that survey, so please take your time and, and finish that out and hit submit. As you're doing that, I'll hand it over to Nathan to talk about some next steps. Thank you for participating. So again, here, just kind of process of this project, Amy talked about earlier, phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, so here, after we gather all the input, input today, um, we will kind of take all of that, compile everything, and create a document that kind of highlights everything we've had. Summarizes kind of what we talked about here tonight, but also diving in another level deeper. You don't want to hear the analysis of all the questions that we had tonight, uh, so we tried to condense it a little bit. Uh, but so phase one will wrap up, phase two will continue, begin taking some of these ideas that we would walk through and ideas that aren't even on here, or taking ideas that are on there and saying, all right, the community doesn't want these, and beginning to design, um, and that'll continue into the, first, the beginning of next year. And then phase three would then take off after that and go into uh, kind of more refinement, and that would go into spring of 2025. Um, so there's a little bit more information on the handout that you grabbed this morning that you can see on there as well that kind of walks through a little bit more detail. On that form, if you haven't already, and you're on social media, um, there is the Facebook page um, that will kind of keep you posted on those things that are coming up and different um, opportunities to get involved. The next one of those will be a workshop very somewhat similar to this one, just looking at the end of phase two um, and getting kind of that last push of feedback um, as we go into phase three, and that'll be happening early next year. Um, so that'll be one way among many other ways that you've been able to see about this one as well. Um, so as you see, we got a couple boards. So the, the next item we're gonna do involves no technology. It's just you talking with us and us listening to what ideas do you wanna have. You may see some pictures that we've gone through today. In the back, you'll see um, some of the survey results. So if you wanted to, what was that quote or what was that percentage? Some of those are back there that you can go and look at and see um, some of that information. There's also a board back there with questions as well. Um, so over here, uh, my left, your right, uh, we have some visual preference surveys. So looking at a picture, do I like that, do I not? What's missing? What do we not even have on there? What are we not even thinking about that Defiance really needs in the parks or along the river? And then over here we have, yes? Yeah. Yep. 
So Cindy and Josh will be over there. Andrew and Amy will be in the back as well. Um, so Amy's hiding up in the corner. And then Amy and I will be over here looking at it. So that's where we saw the list of 20 parks and then also breaking down the parks by the riverfront. And then over here, just any ideas you have for that kind of area. You know, if you haven't had an opportunity to catch it in other places, here's kind of that catch-all. Um, let us know, you know what we're missing. Um, so that'll be our next phase. We're here until until the last person leaves. Um, so you know, give us your thoughts. Now's a great time to do that. Um, we will. My contact information's there. There'll be uh, cards at any of the locations uh, that you're welcome to grab. Reach out directly. Give us feedback. Uh, we always say the more feedback, the better it's going to be for the community. Um, so we thank you for participating. We also thank the city. Uh, Mayor and staff, Melinda, Nikki, and Rob have done a ton. Rob has visited every single one of your parks and went through, what was it, about a 10-page document, Rob, with about 20 questions per page. Um, so we really put Rob to the challenge to, uh, to go through that. Um, and then Melinda and Nikki have been great um, bringing us through everything. The steering committee as well. There's people here from the steering committee from the stakeholder meetings. So we thank you for coming back again and continuing to provide your input. Um, so we'll set up a couple of these boards and feel free to walk around, talk. Um, we're here to listen. So we appreciate it. And thank you very much for coming tonight.